promises of God, we are going to be people of the Word of God. Amen? How many people want to be people of the Word of God? You know, in today's age, there are so many things that are relative. People question truth all of the time. Oh, that might be true for you, but it's not true for me. You might think that way. It might be okay for you, but it's not for me. Or I can do this because I think this way, I feel this way, and this is my truth. We live in a day and age when black is white and white is black, and everything is, there's no, there's no absolute truths. And so as Christians, we need to focus our lives on the one truth, and that's the Word of God. Because the way, the way things work in our culture and things are going to, we, if we're not grounded on the Word of God, we're just going to get blown around here and there. We won't know what to think. This person will talk to us and say this, and we'll be, yeah, yeah, yeah. This person will talk to us about something else. We'll say, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if we don't have the Word of God, we're going to be like, a ship that's just blown around by the wind here and there. We need the anchor of God's word. Amen? We need the anchor of God's word. So verse 2, His delight is in the law of the Lord, and on His law He meditates day and night. They delight. It's not just a duty, okay? We're not just reading the word of God because it's in morning time and I just got to get through my devotions and read my three chapters in the morning. No, this person delights in the law of the Lord. That means they love it. They eat it up. They're like, yes, I want the truth. I want the word of God. They delight in it. They're, they're so eager. They can't wait to get to God's word. And this is what God is encouraging us to be like. Delight in God's word. Find joy in it. Find truth in it. Find peace in it. Find correction in it. People who love the Word of God love correction because the Bible is constantly adjusting us and showing us the things where we need to grow and change, but it's also showing the faithful love of God who's like a faithful father, who's like a coach and helping us along the way to lead us into the path of life and the path of righteousness. That word in there meditates. They meditate day and night. This word means to it has very, very many meanings if we look at it. It means to mumble. How many people mumble sometimes when you're doing a job or sometimes you talk to yourself? Sometimes it's not, you know, you're not grumbling or complaining, but sometimes you just need to, oh, yeah, I got to do this. And, oh, yeah, you know, put this together. And, oh, yeah, 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 do this. Oh, yeah, I got to remember, can't forget to do this. That's one of the meanings of the word meditate. Meditating on the word of God. Repeating God's word to yourself, okay? So maybe you're going through your day or something like that. You're like, okay, yeah, Psalms 1 1. It says, Blessed is a man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of mockers. His delight is in the law of the Lord. It's reminding yourself of God's word so you can use it. We're not just reading a, an empty word, but we're, okay, yeah, in this situation, God reminded me about this. This is God's promise. Speak God's promise to me over and over again. And so I can live that out. And when I'm talking about this person, talking to this person, I'm going to remind them about God's father love for them. And these are some of the verses we're going to talk through. And it's, it, it's remembering. It's meditating on. It's reminding yourself. It's similar to a cow chewing its cud, all right, where the cow eats, eats the grass or the hay or something and I don't know, how many stomachs do the cows have? Like six or seven? or I forget how many. How many? All right, Leah says 20. All right, I don't know. We're going to Google that after service, okay? All right, we'll see who's closer. But what they do is they eat it, and it goes into one of their stomachs. Then they kind of puke it back up into their mouths, chew it some more. And it's bringing life and nutrients to them, but it just again and again and again and again. It's not just one thing where we read the Word of God in the morning, and then, okay, yeah, I'm going to go about the rest of my day and not even think about it. No, God wants us to... Think about the stories that we read and the verses and, oh, yeah, I, I read this story about Joseph this morning, and this is what happened in his life. Even though he was being a righteous man, God threw, uh, they threw him into the, the dungeon, and, but he was still faithful to God, and God raised him back up. And it's 
remembering those things and making the Word of God the central part of your life. Not just a priority where you check it off a list, but it's, it's, it's the every moment of your life. You're, you're thinking about that at every moment. The law in those days refers to the Torah. And the Torah, from in the Hebrew, the Torah is the first five books of the Old Testament. So we have Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And so there is a great section of that that's the law, where you know God gave the Ten Commandments and the rules for the tabernacle and all that stuff. But that's not all that's in there. Okay, that's only a part of it. There's tons of amazing stories in the book of Genesis where God is moving in people's lives. We see the story of Abraham and the beginning of the children of Israel. We see the faith of Abraham, him leaving his hometown and going out and following God and walking with God and going out at night and seeing the stars in the sky and God's promise to them and promise to him about your descendants are going to be like the stars in the sky. And, and Abraham believed and that was credited to him as righteousness. We see the story of Noah, him receiving a word from God that there was going to be a flood. And he spent years and years and years and years building this ark out of faithfulness to God. And God came in a mighty way and saved him and his family preserved him in the times of destruction. We see so many good, good stories that can help us. I, I was just reading in uh, Exodus just the other day about when the children of Israel left, uh, left Egypt. And they got, they got to the Red Sea there. And one of the verses that God, that, that one of the words that God spoke to them, it says, stand still and you will see the deliverance of your God. Don't freak out. Don't, you know, run away or don't try and fight. Stand still, and you're going to see the deliverance of God. And at that moment, that word spoke to me. God, you want me to trust you. Kind of like what we we're experiencing in worship today. God want me to trust him. Stand still and see the blessings and the promises of God. See God fight on your behalf. In that passage, it says, the enemies that you see today, you'll never, you're never going to see them again. That was God's promise to the children of Israel standing there at the Red Sea. And something like that can just, boom, just impacts your day. Like, man, God, you said this. The enemies that I see, I'm never going to see them again. God's going to destroy them. That's what God wants us meditating on and thinking about. He wants not just to be words on a paper that you read, but it, he wants it to be an impacting part of your life. You know, people say... Oh, I don't need, I mean, no, nobody here in this room, but some people would say, I have the Spirit of God. I, I don't need to read the Bible as much. I, I am led by the Spirit of God. Well, the Bible says in 1 Timothy 3.16, all Scripture is God-breathed. And the word Spirit actually means breath. So every word from God is God-breathed. And I want you to do something with me, okay? Put your mouth... Put your hand in front of your mouth like this and say, hello, okay? Did you feel it? Did you feel the breath come out of your mouth? Okay, now try to say it without breathing. Oh, you can't do it, right? You can't speak a word without breath. And God doesn't speak a word without the Spirit. The Word of God is God sending His Spirit they say that in John chapter 1, Jesus is the word of God. It's God sending his word, sending his spirit into the earth to display the glory of God, to live and to show what the Father truly is like. And so when we read the word, don't just think of it as words on a page, but it's got the Spirit of God within it as well. Amen? Because the Word and the Spirit go together. You can't have the Word without the Spirit. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and on His law He meditates day and night. He is like a tree, a tree that is planted by streams of water. In this part of the verse, the word planted there doesn't just mean something that is growing. It, it means that something was purposely placed in a certain spot. 
It also has the meaning of transplanted, taking from one place to another and putting in this spot. So when we think about a tree that is planted, it's the dirt was dug up. Probably the tree was taken from another place where it was growing, was taken up from there and put in the dirt here because this is the good spot for the tree. Now, we can say that maybe the gardener did it, but if we are the tree and we're planted, I believe that this means that there are some things that we must take responsibility for in our own Christian life to make sure that we're planted in a good spot, that we're, that we take, we're, this, the, the dirt is dug up, we're put in a good spot. And, you know, in our lives, with the Word of God, sometimes it takes a little bit of discipline. A lot of times it takes a lot of discipline. Sometimes I wake up in the morning and I know that I need to read the Word of God and get into God's presence. And sometimes it's not so easy, but it's not so easy. You know, we're, our lives are not just an accident going somewhere to happen, right? We have a purpose. We have a destiny. We have vision for our lives. We want to be blessed. We want that abundant life. But sometimes we need to be the ones who take responsibility for it and say, okay, I'm going to move myself from this place and put myself here and allow my roots to go down into the Word of God, into the truth of the Word of God. I'm going to, maybe you had your thoughts, maybe you were a tree planted over here and you were planted you know, in the world, and you are planted in the, the, the ways of the world and the thoughts of the world and the lies of the world. you got to dig that up and say, no, I'm going to plant myself in a good spot, remove myself from there, and put myself in a good spot. I'm going to choose to go after God. I'm going to choose to go after the Word of God. I'm going to choose to renew my mind, like Romans 12, verse 2 says. It's not just a... It's not just a kind of fixing the, my way of thinking, but it's just a complete erase, erasing of all of those things and saying, I'm going to put my mind and put my heart into the Word of God and let my roots go down deep. Let your roots go down deep to the promises of God. Let your roots go down and soak up the water, the nutrients from the soil of God's Word, of the promises, so that you can grow up into this kind of tree talks about streams of living water. This is actually, it, it probably is referring not to uh, a tree that is just next to a river somewhere, but it's actually irrigation canals that are dug for this specific tree for the water to come and to water the tree. If you go to my house, you'll see some dead plants out in front of my, <laughs> out in front of my yard or my little place where I park there. In the rainy season, they do great because they get water all the time, okay? But in the, uh, in the dry season like we're in now, they don't do so good. All the leaves fall off. They get all dried up because I'm not very good at watering them. But if I could get some sort of system that would just do it automatically, maybe I run some PVC pipe there and it just does it by itself, that would be great, okay? It takes more work than, uh, than uh, the, the, just letting the rain come and stuff. But... So this is, this is kind of what it's like, though, a tree where we dig the irrigation canal so there's constantly water flowing to this tree. So there's water all around it, and it gets all of the water and the nutrients that it needs. Digging is not easy. Going, walking over to the river and kind of digging a little ditch there to get the water flowing to the right spot, that's not easy work. It's, not, it's also not easy work digging out the stuff from our lives that are not good for us and putting in the truth of the Word of God. You know, but it's worth it. It's totally worth it. Because in those dry seasons, the work has been done. In those testing seasons, the work has been done. And this tree is going to flourish because it's planted in a good spot. The work's been done for the water to come to this tree, and it's going to grow. But we can't wait until the dry season or the testing season in order to start working. Last week, we used the example of Jesus being tested when, when he was in the wilderness. He had victory through the Word of God. Satan brought this temptation. Jesus countered with the Word of God all three times. It was the Word of God. 
from the Torah, from the first five books of the Old Testament. But Jesus didn't, Jesus didn't say when he, when he was tempted, he didn't say to the Satan, he, said, he didn't say to him, wait, 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 just a minute, let me open my Bible so I can find a verse that I can uh, argue with you about. No, he already had it deep in his heart. He already had it memorized. He already knew the word of God so good and so clear so that when those temptations came, boom, 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 just like that. We don't, have, we don't know when the temptations or the tests in our lives are going to come. If we did, then we could study for them and probably ace them, but we'd probably be like the typical high school student who crams for a test and uh, stays up all night the night of the day before. But God's not like that. It's always, kinda, it's always a pop quiz. It's always a quick thing where you've got to be ready already. And so it's so important that we fill our lives with the Word of God fill our lives with the Spirit of God through His Word so that when those times come, we have an answer. We can say God, or we can say temptation, or maybe we're talking to our flesh, and we can say, no, this is what God wants me to do. I'm going to honor God. I'm going to live for God. Knowing the Word of God also, having the Word of God in us, will also bring help us to have discernment in our lives. Helps us to know the right from the wrong, truth from the lies, the light from the darkness. And if you don't have that, once again, you're going to be like one of those ships that's just kind of blown around by everything that you hear. In the Gospels, there's a story where Jesus is talking to his disciples. He says, who does man say that I am? And the disciples answer, some say you're a prophet, and some say you're a good teacher. Some say this, some say that. So the first answer is the answer about man, man's thoughts. Then then Jesus asked him, well, how about you? Who do you say that I am? And then they answer him and said, you are, you are the Messiah. You are the Christ who's come. Then, you know, that's Peter's answer. And, and then Jesus says to him, Peter, he says, on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. God's building his church. There's the, the thoughts of man, the thoughts of, the thoughts of God, and then there's, it's interesting because the next story after that is uh, Jesus talking about himself going to Jerusalem. He's going to go and die on the cross. And, and uh, Peter, once again, we have Peter. He says, no, 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 master, rabbi, we're not going to allow you to do that. And uh, Jesus says, get thee behind me, Satan. So, Whoa, that's kind of a big time rebuke. I hope no one ever says that to me, especially Jesus, right? But we see that, you know, here we had a thought from man, a thought from God, and then a thought from the evil one, Satan. And so a lot of times we can have things floating around, and sometimes we hear this, sometimes we hear that. It's good to be able to weigh and to know through the Word of God what to allow in and what to say, no, that's not right. I'm, I, I reject that thought. I reject that temptation. But you can't do it if you don't have the Word of God. The Word of God is our foundation. It has to be. It has to be our foundation. If we don't have God's Word in us, we're not going to be like this tree that's growing. Delight in the Word of God. So I'd encourage you just to do practical things every day. Read the Word of God. If, if you don't read God's Word on a regular basis, just start. You don't have to, you know, finish the whole Bible in a year or whatever. Just try a chapter a day. Maybe you start in Proverbs. Proverbs has 31 days. Okay, there's lots of different ways you can do it. Proverbs has 31 days. Most months have about 31, sorry, Proverbs has 31 chapters. Most months have 31 days. So you read a chapter a day. Just say, okay, today is the 12th. So today I'll read Proverbs chapter 12. <coughs> Maybe you want to start reading about the ministry of Jesus. Start in Matthew. Okay? You read one chapter a day in the, in the Gospels. You'll get through all four Gospels in about 90 days. That's three months. And don't beat yourself up if you miss a day or two. Just delight in God's Word. Don't ever make it a duty or a, I have to do this. But as you read, I would encourage you to look for something. Look for one verse that you can pick out of there and keep it there for the day. 
I would encourage you also to pray. There, I read not enough books, but I read some books, and sometimes I have questions. Man, I'd love to ask the author about this, or I'd love to sit down. One of my favorite authors is C.S. Lewis. I would just love to sit and have a coffee with C.S. Lewis and just have him tell me about life. And I can't do that. He's dead and gone. But we have the author of the Word of God, who is the Spirit of God, with us every day. So you can say to this Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, today I'm going to read your Word. I want you to explain this to me. I want you to help me to understand this. And, and expect, expect the Holy Spirit to say something to you. Say, All right, okay, today, speak to me. Maybe it's a verse, maybe it's a whole story, whatever it is. Just talk to me about it. And expect something from him. Because I'm pretty sure that C.S. Lewis would have a coffee with me if he was still alive and I went and visited him. He probably would. He's a probably, a, hopefully, a generous guy. But Holy Spirit, how, how much even more than that? So expect. Ask the Spirit to speak to you through the Word. Read the Word. And memorize the Word. Okay? We need to have the Word of God in us because we can't always be just, all right, hold on a second. Let me read the Bible and try and figure it out or Google the verse or whatever. But have it in you. Have it in you. The Bible says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. That's a powerful scripture. Okay? It's in Psalm 119, I believe. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Put the word of God in you that you can live a life that's pleasing and honoring to him. Speak the word. Just like we talked about meditate. Speak the word. Okay, don't just put it in there, and but speak it. Repeat it over and over to yourself. Okay? Sing about it. I love some of the old songs that are just right from scriptures. The song, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. Somebody put that to music. How awesome is that? You can just sing it over and over and over again. Get the word of God in you. It's not just an empty song, but it's, wow, it's powerful. It's the exact word of God. Live the word. It's not just a good idea, but it's instructions for life. God created us. Holy Spirit's with us. Live the word. Obey the word. Do what the word of God says. And finally, give, give glory to God for his word. You know, when you start living the word and obeying and living God's way, people are going to notice. Your life will be like a shining light in the darkness. And people will start to say, what's so different about you? You're so full of joy, full of faith, full of hope. And you say, well, I'm just following God's word. I'm just, I put God's, I, I made a decision to, to put God's word into me. And so I'm living that way because this is what I believe. I hope in it. I put my trust in it. And so ask the Spirit to speak to you through the Word. Read the Word. Memorize the Word. Speak the Word. Sing the Word. Live the Word. And give glory to God for His Word. There's a proverb that goes like this. I have it up, up there on the screen. It goes, all right, I'll just, I memorize it. So it says, the best day to plant a tree was 20 years ago because then you'd have all of the fruit of the tree. But the second best day to plant a tree is today. So if you haven't made a habit of getting into the Word of God 20 years ago, that's okay. The second best day is today. Get into the Word of God. Trust the Word of God. Because then your life will be like that tree that is planted, purposefully planted by the streams, the irrigation canals that come in and bring life, daily life, daily life into you. So I just want to encourage you with that word today. It's not something that we, yeah, rah, 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 but it's you take it home and do it. Take it home and do it. I really want to encourage you. Don't just listen and listen to the word of God, but apply the word of God. Do it. Just, just go home and read the word. Trust God. Let it change your life. Amen? Amen.
Let's all stand up together as we finish praying. You know, if anybody needs any help in a practical area, reading the Word of God, you need plans or places to start. A lot of our leaders here, we'd love to chat with you guys about that and, you know, give you some ideas for ways that you can do it. Discipline yourself on a daily basis to be able to get into God's Word. There's a lot of practical steps and tips that you guys could uh, benefit from. So just come up and talk to us. We'd love to chat with you guys afterwards. But for now, let me pray with you guys. Let's pray together. Pray to the Lord together. Hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you for your word. We praise you for your promises. You've never failed us. Your promise still stands. This is not an ancient, out-of-date book, but it's the Word that is real and brings life to us. And we praise you for it. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that we have your Word, that you've blessed us with your Word. It's a treasure. The Word of God is a treasure. God, help us to value it, to get into it, to read it, to study it, to allow it to change our lives so that we can be more like you and we can, at the end of our days, say that we have lived a blessed life, a blessed life planted by the streams of living water. God, we thank you. Holy Spirit, I pray for each one of us as we go and as we, as we go and as we get into the Word of God, Holy Spirit, I ask you to move upon us. I ask you to reveal your truth from the Word of God. Make it alive. Make it, a, make it real to each one of us. May our hearts be stirred. May our hearts burn within us because of your Word, God. And Lord, let, us, let it shape us and mold us into the men and women of God that you have created us to be. Lord God, we thank you for your word. We submit to your word. We love your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much for coming. God bless you guys. If any